Hey, I'm back and we're going to talk about sleeping pills and insomnia. Sleeping pills are almost at the top of the list. So many people have a sleeping problem, but I'm going to give you some really important tips that I think can really improve the quality of your sleep. Now, I personally had a problem with sleeping in my 20s. It was so bad sometimes there were nights I didn't even sleep one minute. So I do understand the feeling of not being able to sleep. It's literally torture because you're laying there just trying all these techniques and you're getting all worked up and it's just really frustrating. Now there's two big problems with sleeping pills and I'm going to put some links down below just to validate what I'm talking about. But number one, they're side effects. Okay. Six out of 10 people have side effects from sleeping pills. So the next day you feel drowsy or you have confusion or forgetfulness or you're tired. I mean, the goal of sleeping is to recharge your body so you can have energy through the day, not feel this way. And based on several studies, the benefits from sleeping pills are not as great as you might think because some of them only give you a small amount of extra sleep. It's less than 30 minutes and only help you go to sleep between eight and 20 minutes faster. And even doctors don't recommend taking this on a consistent basis because when you stop taking it now, you really can't sleep. So it comes with a package. So here are some things that I would recommend. Number one, read a book instead of watching TV before you go to bed. Sounds very simple, but it really does work. You should try it. Going for a long walk between 45 and 60 minutes. So I always sleep better on the days that I go for these long walks. It's low stress, lots of oxygen. Also stretching before bed, essential, especially if you're on the computer all day. Some of you may have seen this in other videos, but it's an acupressure technique. You can use a device like this or have someone do it on you, okay? You're gonna be putting pressure in the upper part of your neck while you lay down on the couch or I'm going to show you another way to do it so you can apply this on someone else or they can do it to you. But this technique will completely relax all the muscles in your back to the point where you can drift off into a wonderful sleep. Next thing is to be careful of the amount of caffeine that gets built up in your liver and your liver sometimes can't detoxify it. So that extra caffeine will keep you up. Coffee, tea, chocolate, course sodas, but if you've been watching my channel, you're not consuming sodas, but caffeine is in a, in a lot of things. It's even in certain medications and it's in energy drinks. So we want to avoid those. Now, another good remedy is L-tryptophan. L-tryptophan turns into serotonin and melatonin, which is the sleep hormone. So this is a really good amino acid, but it needs to be taken on an empty stomach because it's a building block of protein. If you consume protein at the same time, they'll both compete and you won't get the effect of L-tryptophan at all. In fact, if you eat protein with this, you will feel absolutely no change. I never recommend taking melatonin now because this is a hormone and over time you need more and more and more. Now the sleep aid that I recommend not only has L-tryptophan, but it has all sorts of other ingredients to extract stress and allow you to drift off into a wonderful sleep so you can wake up and not feel drowsy. I put a link down below for more information on that. All right, so now I'm going to show you the technique. Uh, go ahead and practice it, do it, and put your comments below. A technique that I'm going to teach you right now of how to extract stress from the body. And um, I would use this as a before and after to see the change. One of the biggest things that this technique is going to help you with is to improve your quality of sleep. Sleep is everything. It's going to help you cope with stress. It's going to help you rejuvenate. It's going to increase your tolerance for stress. In fact, you cannot heal the adrenals without sleep. It's impossible. How are you going to get rid of sleep problems if you have stress? And I'm talking about accumulative stress in your body. So, so yes, we need to go for long walks. We need to get space. We need to eat better. The first technique we're going to show you is how to get rid of stress in your neck. Okay. So that's going to be a very cool technique. And there's different points in the neck that we're going to work on. And then we're going to work on the points in the mid back and then the abdomen area. Then in the upper part of the rib cage, where a lot of people hold a lot of stress. So with that, let's get right to it and show you how to do this technique. Okay, so we're going to show you how to pull stress out of the body. The first technique is the called the upper cervical. Now, what you're going to do is you're going to take. This is meant to be done on someone else. So hopefully you have a twin or a partner. You can do this. I'm going to show you how to do it to yourself. 
but this is great to do it on someone else. Okay, so you want to use this finger here. This one, I'm not flipping you off. This is, this is just the middle finger right here. And then your thumb, okay? And then we're going to press this way, right underneath her skull. And the most important thing is not to mess up your hair. Yeah. Okay, so we're going to, there's this little ridge right underneath the skull. You're going to slip right underneath it, and you're going to press in equally, okay? And you're going to take your hand and press in the forehead. So you're going to press in right like this. You feel that? And the key is to make sure that you're equal, like the thumb and the middle finger, the pressure, so you're not too much on one side. Now, what I'm doing now is I'm stimulating um, something in your neck that is triggering the kind of the, the brake pads, or the, it's called the parasympathetic nervous system, which is the relaxation points in the body. And the parasympathetic nervous system that comes out at this level of your spine uh, kind of helps you sleep, it helps you relax. And so that's why the more that I do this, the more that you're going to feel like you want to take a nap. How does it feel so far? I'm going to go to sleep. You're going to go to sleep. I thought so. So um, I'm just pressing in right underneath that, and I'm just going to hold that for about an hour. No, just kidding. But if I keep doing this, she's going to feel very relaxed. So this is like the real key de-stressor point. It's going to pull the stress right out of your body. Now, I'll do this for a little bit, maybe for like a minute, and then I'll slip down to the second vertebra right here. This one is really good for sinus issues. So do you have any sinus issues? No. Did you want any sinus no. issues? Okay, good. So the sinus points, it just helps you breathe, and it's good for people that have sleep apnea. So again, I'm just pressing my fingers in this way, in the head that way, okay? So we're going to come right in there. All right, and then I'll slowly kind of come down, and I'm looking for tightness. If there's no tightness, I'm not going to press on it. Now, when I come down to the third vertebra, on her left side, there's a big knot. It's tight. So what I'll do is I'll just press a little more towards the left side, and um, it's going to make her neck feel really good. It's going to put the curve back in the neck. So I'm just going to creep down lower and lower till I get right here. This is a C5. This one is really good if you have a sore throat or a raspiness, like your, your voice is hoarse. Uh, let's say you're a musician, you, like you sing or you um, speak for a living and your voice is kind of raspy. You do this and uh, it kind of opens up the, the voice. Now, um, do you feel this point, how tight this is right here? Yeah. yeah. So I'm just holding this pressure until it melts, okay? I'm not pressing that hard. And then now I'm going to go all the way down, very lower, like to the lower points. It's, this is C6. This is really good for um, um, the thyroid, thyroid points. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to hold this until the entire neck is nice and loose. And she's going to feel very relaxed in the neck. So many people hold stress in the neck. Okay, look at right through in there. You feel this? Point right here. So I'm emphasizing the left side because it's it's kind of really tight in the left. Okay. So how does that feel? Good. You like that? Yeah. Okay. Good. So you can let's uh, let's get the next victim. I mean the next patient. All right. So we're going to show you how to do this on yourself. You need a device like this. This is built uh, after my own hand. Okay. And this is great for different sizes of people. We've got the real wide one here. This is for the top part of the neck. This is for different parts of the neck. This is for different size people. We're going to take the widest one on myself, hook it on the back of my neck, scoot this down on a tall back chair or the couch. I think this works better than using it on, on your pillow when you're going to sleep at night because you're at a certain angle and you can apply it. You can sit back and just let these points press right into your neck. And there's a sweet spot that you want to hit that you'll just feel like the maximum release of stress and you'll just want to take a nap. I fell asleep. Sometimes I'll do this on my desk. I'll put my feet up and I'll sit back and I will just like go right out. This is like the most important acupressure point for your entire spine to feel relaxed and to melt. Because you're hitting a point called the parasympathetic the origin of the parasympathetic nervous system, which is right there. 
and that's the turn off switch that's like the rest and digest that's your uh, relaxation um, points and then you do that for a little while and then you come down to the next point through here second one and I had a history of a lot of neck problems so I do this a lot to keep my neck nice and relaxed okay then I'll inch down to the middle part like C5 and this is again really good for um, tension in your upper your upper shoulders and also good for your believe it or not it's gonna help your voice yeah hoarseness because what you're doing is you're putting uh, stimulating uh, these points that bring circulation to the entire front part of your neck and I always tell people don't believe me just do it and just tell me what you feel uh, be skeptical and uh, see if it prove it to yourself and uh, nine out of ten times it seems to work so you should try it okay so that's so you want to start out with the first one second third fourth and just kind of like ease down to the lower part of your neck okay so that's how you do the neck point now this one here you want to go right up underneath the clavicle collarbone and you're gonna stretch back like this and if you haven't already subscribed, click the red button below and that little bell icon so you can be notified of all the new videos that I'm going to be releasing. And I have some very cool and interesting videos coming up in the next coming weeks. Plus, in addition to that, you'll be notified of the live Q&A sessions that I'm going to be doing throughout the week and you don't want to miss those as well. So stay tuned for more great content.